Well, hello everybody. This is uh, the first tutorial of a series of um, videos that I want to prepare for for MIT students um, with the purpose of, I don't know, like um, collaborating a little bit with this online uh, system that we're having right now. I know that many of you are uh, um, missing opportunities to learn new things. Uh, sometimes you try to go to youtube or other resources and probably like things are not tailored for architecture students um, and so on and so forth so um i want to create a series of tutorials also based on your preferences right now i'm gonna do something really simple with rhino and grasshopper uh to teach you how to get digital terrains because of course no one can travel nowadays um so if you're doing uh, a project for a studio for example uh it's a cool thing to uh get a digital version of the site where you're basically making your project for that we're going to use of course rhino um i am planning to include tutorials on revit and fusion 360 as alternatives for 3d modeling because those are really really powerful tools um, Revit, of course, has many, many advantages. I know that some people don't like it. Uh, I like it a lot because it is a really, prof a real professional tool for producing architecture. And also Fusion 360 is a really well integrated platform where you can go from design, rendering, uh, drawing production, analysis, generative design, um, and really precise uh, 3D modeling, also manufacture. You can even like slice your own models for 3D printing without having to go to the slicer or Cura. So uh, let's start. The first thing that uh, you want to do, uh, I will uh, include a link in, uh, in the description of this video where you can download the necessary files to work with this um, these tutorials uh, uh, this tutorial specifically I have to say it works only on Windows I work on both sides like Mac and Windows and Linux sometimes um, I will include also a tutorial on rendering on Blender but that's for, for the future but for now I'm working on Windows because the specific tool that we will use is called map windows uh, gis which is uh, let me show you here on the screen this is software that you need to install in your computer only available for windows that will allow uh, that will allow grasshopper to communicate with this software and get the necessary information from um, open street view uh, and many uh, free uh, sites databases that contain really nice information so uh, I will include this link in the description um, where you can download the necessary files <clears throat> basically what we are going to use um, as I was saying is map uh, window GIS that I will uh, it will be included here uh, I will put the grasshopper definition not the script I don't know why people called script to grasshopper files those are definitions and also uh, what we will use is called gizmo or gismo um, that is a plugin for grasshopper which basically this is a bunch of um, c sharp and python components that allows you to um, interact with this uh, gis information and get like uh, pretty much like whatever you want like street information uh, also like uh, the shape files for constructions roads um, elevation information and so on and so forth so first things first open rhino and launch grasshopper and in order to install gizmo is the typical thing that you do with any um, plugin or most of plugins for for grasshopper you go to file to go to special folders and in this case you can go to user object folder and here you will paste um, 
all the files that I you will copy and paste all the um, GH user files that I will provide in, in the link after you do that uh, you must close grasshopper rest uh, of course restart uh, uh, Rhino and you will see gizmo install if you have any problem and you don't see this tab gizmo in your uh, grasshopper tools probably the typical thing is that you need to unblock your files basically you right click properties unblock and apply uh, doing that you won't have any problem <clears throat> so um, so the definition looks uh, like this um, we will go over uh, this right now uh, you want to start a new document and first and first it's um, for example if you're working in uh, I don't know like any place um, let me look for a nice place let's say we need to go to maps.google.com in order to get the coordinates like a center coordinate of the place where you're uh, working so let's say we want to work in I am from Chile so let's say I want to go I want to work in the desert of of Chile so this is the city of Kalama this is next to the uh, biggest uh, copper mine in the world it's called Chuki Um I will switch to to satellite view so as you can see this is like the biggest hole made by man or basically humankind uh, in the history of the world this is like really big and this is a really perfect example of how to get like a really good uh, um, topography and 3d model from this thing so <clears throat> uh, it doesn't matter like which is uh, the place that you are most of the information is contained in, in, in google maps and in other places that connects to basically gizmo connects to this databases uh, what you need is this information uh, you see here like the address um, google.com maps place you have the name and here you have the coordinates that says like uh, latitude and the longitude of and also the elevation that doesn't matter so you want to copy this information and you want to go to grasshopper and create double click you will create a panel and here you will um, paste this information oops I didn't copy <clears throat> copy and paste and we will delete the comma and we will we will um, create another panel and paste the other data so that's the first thing that uh, you want to do and gizmo has like many tools as you can see here and one tool that we're interested in is uh, create location that basically will this will connect uh, to the database if you double click on gizmo you will see that this is this is very important if you're using rhino 5 it will work but you need to install grasshopper python this is just a python script uh, this is a script uh, code line by line that says um, whatever like check the inputs and connect to the basically format the information so you can connect to the database to get the information that I want and the location name is optional uh, let's create it let's, uh, let's say this is Chuki Kamata and location name. I'm going to put it here. This is the latitude, the longitude, and we have this <coughs> already. Uh, now, what do we want to do? Uh, it's as easy as just uh, using the terrain tools. Uh, you see that Gizmo has uh, address to location 
basically like many tools to interact uh, with GIS information. Uh, it connects to OpenStreetMap if you want to get the shapes, for example, or some 3D information such as buildings. You can get all New York City, for example, from, from this. Um, and of course, you have terrain tools. So you can get like flow paths, price angles, uh, analysis of the terrain, also like shading mask. So you want to know like how the sunlight affects your or basically interacts with your with your side, with your building. You can have this. Um, but for now, we, we are going to focus on the on the terrain generator. So <clears throat> this asks you for a lot of information. You don't have to worry about it. We will uh, do. Uh, we will input the the net just the necessary information. The first thing that you want to do is to include a toggle boolean toggle uh, for now we will set it to false why because uh, this takes a little bit of time to process probably like from 15 seconds to probably like three minutes it depends on how powerful is your computer if you are running this using uh, parallels like a virtual machine on mac it will be a little bit painful so i will recommend to either use a Windows computer or use bootcamp. In my case, I'm using bootcamp. It's not the fastest, but it works, even though I have like a good uh, MacBook Pro uh, with a lot of RAM, good graphics card, like top of the line, but still it, it struggles. In my desktop, it's way faster. So, of course, uh, <clears throat> it asks you for the location. We will connect this and also we want to indicate a radius basically this is if we see the description it's uh, the horizontal distance to which the surrounding terrain will be taken into account it cannot be shorter than 20 meters and no longer than 100,000 meters so you know the units are in meters um, we're not thinking about like miles or things like that so we will say that, okay, give me a radius of 100 kilometers. I think that's acceptable. But this is also that if you're using panels like me, don't ever do this, 100, and then press enter, because sometimes that will, basically this will convert this information into a string, not a number. So you don't want like any space or enter after the 100. Or you can use just a slider, just write. 100 and you can input this uh, but since we're not gonna play with the values for now we're just gonna use the panel <clears throat> the other thing uh, in source basically um, you can get different uh, types of, of terrain we're gonna use the one by default that, that is the uh, it's the SRTMGL um, if you if after you process this, you don't get any information you can try with the other two. Uh, for now, we're going to use the default one, so it's going to be zero. Here in type, uh, you see the options. You have like the terrain will be created as a mesh with rectangular uh, edges. Probably that's not the best alternative. It depends. We're going to use option number two. Remember, this is a zero base list, so basically it's the third option, which is the number two. Terrain will be created as a surface with rectangular edges. This is really good also because if you want to mail this or 3D print it, uh, because it's a nerve surface, then you can basically regulate how the mesh is created um, when you <clears throat> export this for, for let's, uh, a slicer program to 3D print it. Uh, so we will create another panel. Uh, panel. Gonna input two type two, and I'm gonna go really quick with the other options. The origin, um, basically, it will set the origin of your three D space. Basically, this point as the origin of your file. So, what does it mean that this coordinate will be located in this point, which is okay. Uh, then you can move it. Uh, the north, where you want to uh, put the north of this, you can indicate a vector. So you can uh, create a vector 3D uh, like this, input this. By default, we're going to use 
the one that they provide, uh, the 000, sorry, the um, y axis. So the north will be uh, in the direction of the green line over here, which is okay, like pointing up. <clears throat> uh, stand thickness, we're not going to mess with that. Uh, the number of contours, this is important. Uh, according to the elevation, you want to, if you want to create the contours immediately, you can do that. If not, you can do that afterwards for now, just to show you how it works. Just going to say, give me uh, 100 contours. I think I'm writing on the Windows console. Yes. So, okay, now 100. I am going to connect this here. Um, I guess doo -doo 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 -doo, we're not going to use that. Um, so with this, we should be okay. What this is going to output uh, first is a, a readme. Basically, the, the input is a readme. It says like all inputs are okay. This should work. Please set the run it to through. Uh, in order to run the terrain generator and you will find uh, that this will create a uh, geometry of the terrain. You might be tempted to use a BREP or a mesh container. Actually, what you want to do is to create a just like a geo from geometry. Um, component uh, the origin, we said that we don't care about that. The elevation, you can set it like manually. And also for the elevation contours, we're going to use the same type of node. Why am I doing this and not like using a mesh or whatever? Because um, sometimes it depends on the type of um, geometry that you want. Sometimes you want to create a mesh or a surface. So you don't want to change this like every time. Okay, I want a mesh, I want a surface. So this will accept any type of geometry that Rhino can um, can give you. So uh, just to finish this part, we will just press this to true, and we will wait. You see now my computer is completely blocked. So let's see what happens. So this didn't take uh, very long, actually it took like 20 seconds. So you can see, oh, famous red from Grasshopper Files. So if we zoom out, there is something a little bit weird about the geometry. Um, I don't know what this is giving me. So let's see, probably I am not giving enough radius, but you see that this is producing something. So let's see what so <clears throat> what you want to um, always check for example if you're not getting enough information as you can see this is the the actual terrain that we were looking for you can see if you compare to what we saw in the satellite um, we will try to go 3d so you can check it um, see if you go 3d with the with this tool Orbit, yeah. Uh, the morphology is like pretty similar to what we actually it is the same information. I mean, I said it looks pretty similar because um, <clears throat> mainly because um, of course this is a texture model and this, that is some information that we cannot get. Uh, but we can see like the shape of of the mine. Look, this is a copper mine, by the way. The mountains, the terrain, etc., etc. So by playing with this number, that is the radius that um, the terrain generator asked you, I had a really low number, just like 100 kilometers. So it was not, it was not giving uh, too much context. And also, if you want to get the full 3D model, you might want to um, also input the number to get uh, a thickness of the stand. So as you can see, it outputs the location in this, in this, um, right now it's, it's saying that the location is Chukikumara. Um, 
So you got here you have the, <clears throat> the mountains, you have the information of the location, what is the radius that you're getting. So I will, for example, change this to, let's say, half of the radius. Don't press enter, remember. And now I'm not going to pause the video only so you see how much uh, it takes. Give me an error. No, it's generating the terrain. Uh, it's a slow process, but don't freak out. I mean, if it nothing happens, probably it's a good thing. So you will see your terrain um, showing up soon. So as you can see, after changing that parameter to half, I can focus only on the um, information that I need. I just need to get the mine, not too much of the context. So play with that and you will get like pretty uh, good results. So of course, as always, if you want to be organized, like maintain like good practices, you can say like 3D model, uh, one layer and the other one could be like contours. And we will bake the 3D model to this layer. Remember like right click or uh, control they do it now for right now okay whatever just like right click bake we can um, bake this into that layer right click bake and this to contours and now we can of course save our <coughs> definition file uh, of course put a nice name like terrain generator save it you can of course close grasshopper and go to shaded view probably yeah you see you get first let me uh, you get a really clean uh, patch uh, a 3d patch so basically it's a really nice grid uh, of the model that you can use to 3D print, mill, or whatever. You have the contours, of course. Uh, you see, like pretty detail. The good thing about having the model is that you can generate new contours, uh, not only uh, like in elevation, but also you can say um, sections. And if we turn this off, um, we can do. Uh, contour, uh, you can select this as the base point, as the final point, and oh, I set it too low, sorry, uh, the, the number. We do it again. Um, actually, I want to group objects by contour plane. I will select this and say 1000. Because my units are in millimeters, uh, so as you can see now, my computer is generating like a lot of contours that are the sections, and you can get more information about the site that you are uh, using. The advantage of again using a, a surface, a poly surface in this case, um, because it has the the thickness, but you can explode this and get just the surface of the terrain is that you can easily modify it and train it and do all sorts of operations. So now, um, I didn't do it in the right, um, <clears throat> in the right layer. So if I go, for example, to the Ar Arctic uh, shader, Look how nice this information is. Looks pretty good, pretty accurate. Uh, so you can use it on your projects. Just to finalize this tutorial that is going like longer, what I thought as what I was saying is that here you can project curves. You can uh, basically like, um, of course, Rhino is not the best sometimes to do this, but in terms of that, it's not parametric. If you do it in Grasshopper, it will be better. Um, you can, of course, like 
project curves. Um, oops. Do this with the shaded view. Actually, one good thing that I like to do is just to turn off the ISO curves so I don't have like anything interrupting this. I can project this curve into the terrain. So you see, it's projecting to the lower surface and this surface. And then you can perform like any type of operation. So, for example, uh, you know, probably you know how to do this. I can split, I want to split this object, I want to this this curve and you can edit the terrain and do whatever you want so i will not keep this uh 25 minutes is enough longer than uh that i thought but i hope this is um useful for your projects or whatever you're doing during this quarantine um one thing is that in the comments please let, uh, let me know what uh, would you like to learn uh my idea is to get like uh, suggestions about things that you want to learn I will upload, as I was saying, like tutorials related to coding, um, Grasshopper, but more like advanced Grasshopper, uh, probably like some coding using C Sharp or Python. So, uh, probably like using Kangaroo and code and things like that. And also probably like some processing, some JavaScript. Um, I will show a really cool tool that is called Runway ML from a friend, a former student of a uh, student of mine that is doing like. Uh, basically gives you the possibility of using machine learning to interact with Rhino or processing or other software. So let me know. My name is Diego Pinochet. I am a PhD student at the Design and Computation Group and happy to help. Thank you.